retrospect, what symptoms did you have that you wish you had done something about? Uh, both the symptoms. The feeling of being, um, I would say, bloated would be a, a, the best description in my lower, very specifically in my lower abdomen, that I was trying to counteract through sit-ups and I could not. And the second was that I became full very quickly when I ate, even if I was really hungry and hadn't eaten in a long time. And those were the two most pronounced symptoms that I had. How long did you have those symptoms? I, I think, uh, you know, sometimes it's hard to say. I'm going to say two months, maybe more, every day. Dr. Brown, tell me about these guidelines. Why do you think it's so important that women are aware of some of these very early symptoms of ovarian cancer? Well, I think it's really important, and I think Janet's situation really highlights it, that the symptoms of ovarian cancer do exist. That's the first message that's really important because when I went to medical school, I was taught that ovarian cancer is a silent killer. And the research that Dr. Goff did uh, using women's experiences like Janet proved that that's not true. There are symptoms, and in fact, there's a group of symptoms that putting them together, if a woman has them every day for more than two or three weeks, that she really needs to bring it to a doctor's attention. And Janet just pointed out she had two of those very important symptoms. She had the bloating and she had the feeling full very early. And those are two of the symptoms that Dr. Goff uh, was able to isolate as being signs and symptoms of ovarian cancer. Let's go through the symptoms. What are they exactly? Bloating, um, as Janet described, is feeling of um, your stomach pooching out or pressing out. Um, feeling full uh, when you eat very quickly, um, and uh, urinary symptoms, uh, going urinating very frequently or feeling that you have to go all the time, uh, and as well as pain in the lower abdomen area, stomach area, or pelvic area. Those are the four major symptoms that we want women to know about, and it's important to emphasize that we're not saying just if you have these one day, but as Janet described, having them every single day for a long period of time. For like three weeks. For like three weeks, you really should bring it to the attention of, of your physician. How do you make sure that women don't overreact to this news and that they really listen to their bodies carefully, take action when they should, mm -hmm. but don't become unnecessarily alarmed? I think that's a really important point. We don't want to alarm women. We want to make women aware and we also want to make physicians aware because the problem with this disease is actually the reverse. The problem is, as Janet's case, women experience these things and they keep telling themselves, oh, this is just my period, this is just something that every woman gets. And so I think that the fine line is really knowing your own body and as Janet told you very clearly, she knew something was wrong. Um, because she was aware of, of how she normally feels. And it's the fact that these symptoms are persistent. They're every single day, um, and they last for a long time. Um, but it's clear women who have these symptoms, most of them will not have ovarian cancer. Um, but they need to get checked out because they can be signs of other serious conditions. Two to three months waiting, living with these symptoms, that can make a real difference in terms of your prognosis, right? Well, we think so. I mean, we the studies that Dr. Goff has done um, have shown that even women with early stage cancer do have symptoms. So, and we know that ovarian cancer in many cases can grow very rapidly. So, time is of the essence in terms of the diagnosis, and a few months, you know, can make a difference between being able to get the disease under control and, and not being able to control it. If you knew then what you know now, do you think you would have gone to the doctor earlier? It would have required a, a level of awareness about the disease. In other words, if I was aware, had sort of a consciousness about the disease, like we do about breast cancer, um, because of the publicity that, that's, you know, the, the public, um, the effort to inform the public, um, sure, I would have gone. When it comes to other cancers, a PSA test for prostate cancer, mammograms for breast cancer, colonoscopies for colon cancer, why isn't there some kind of early diagnostic test for ovarian cancer? Well. You know, there's a lot of work going on, and, and we are optimistic um, in the oncology community that one day there will be such a test. But right now, there isn't. And I think the reason is um, partially because the ovaries are um, deep inside the body. They're not something that you can look at directly, like you can look at the colon with a colonoscopy. You can check the cervix with a pap smear. 
Um, there is no pap smear for ovarian cancer. And so we're really relying on, I think, two modalities. One are um, imaging studies like x-rays and new types of x-rays, new ways of imaging and looking at the ovaries inside the body. And then the other are blood tests to look for different substances that ovarian cancer may be shedding into the blood and different patterns of these substances. And maybe by putting those two together, we'll be able to find this disease even you know, in very early stages before the symptoms happen. In the meantime, though, you have to rely on women being aware of their bodies and really being cognizant of changes that they may be experiencing. Absolutely. Yes, until we have that test, awareness is best, is what we like to say, right?